This is Mac OS Ken. The latest recruitment news from iPhone City: Elon Musk takes swipes at Apple, and two tales of retail. It is Tuesday, the 29th of November, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Rocket Money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and save at rocketmoney.com slash M-O-K. This show is also sponsored by Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home at the biggest discount of the year. I don't know about your house, but packages are already showing up on my porch. Might want to keep an eye out. This time of year, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike all across the country. That is why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so you can enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. You know a lot of the reasons that I love Simply Safe. I love the customization. You pick just what you need to keep your home safe. Because who knows your home better than you? You also set it up yourself, which is simple. Took me less than an hour to get my sensors, keypad, and base station up and running. Not that you're off on your own. For less than a buck a day, the Simply Safe team keeps an eye out for issues 24 7, sending emergency services as soon as they are needed. Don't miss your chance for massive savings on a great security system. Get 50% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan today. This is their biggest discount of the year. S-I-M-P-L-I. That's simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. There's no safe like Simply Safe. If you're having trouble keeping up with goings on at Foxconn's iPhone City plant in Zhengzhou, it's not just you. Over the weekend came word that Foxconn was paying new recruits the equivalent of $1,400 US to quit and go home. That was after riots caused by discrepancies between what Foxconn promised as a recruitment bonus and when that would be paid. Word was that roughly 20,000 workers, mostly new hires who hadn't even made it to the production lines yet, took the contract manufacturer up on that offer. Now a piece from the South China Morning Post says Foxconn is back in a hiring frame of mind, though they'd like to skip the training part this time. The piece says the company is trying to coax the thousands of workers who fled the factory throughout October and early November back to the line. According to the report, the Foxconn unit that handles iPhone production is running a returning geese recruitment plan that includes bonuses for returning workers adding up to 12,000 yuan, roughly $1,670 US, if they come back and stay for two months. Elon Musk is weaponizing Twitter against Apple now. That is the headline of a piece from CNET. Twitter's relatively new owner spent a bit of time on the service Monday, sowing seeds of discontent against the Cupertino company. In one, he said, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? According to CNET, some prominent Apple bloggers pointed out that Apple ads actually appeared on Twitter next to Musk's anti-Apple tweets. Musk went on to post that Apple has also threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. Of course, he responded to positive comments. Some crypto bro added him, saying, Apple takes a 30% tax from app developers who make over a million dollars through the app store on an annual basis. Apple's app store is the equivalent to a 30% tax on the internet. Musk quote tweeted that, adding, Did you know Apple puts a secret 30% tax on everything you buy through their app store? Finally, he tweeted a meme indicating that he would rather go to war, one assumes with Apple, than pay the app store's 
30% commission. Having a normal one was our Mr. Musk. I saw two interesting comments on Musk's Apple assault. Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives said Apple is the one company in the world you never want to pick a fight with. Asked whether Apple needs Twitter. The analyst said, Apple views Twitter like a piece of bread at the restaurant before you get your meal. That's a good comment, but the tech journalist Kara Swishers was better. She took to Twitter saying, Front-loading a fight with Tim Cook with specious nonsense isn't going to work. Why? For one, he's not a manic toddler hopped up on Twinkies and weaponry cosplay. Plus, no advertisers like to spend their marketing money in a thunderdome of toxic asininity. I looked it up. Asininity is actually a word. Kara Swisher, play of the day. Apple didn't immediately respond to a request for comment, according to CNET. And Twitter, well, it doesn't seem to have a PR department anymore, so nothing from them either. Well, nothing that wasn't tweeted. Dissuading unions may end up being as troublesome for Apple as welcoming them if one group has its way. A report from Apple Insider says the group Apple Together is seeking reports on alleged union busting with the intent of mounting a lawsuit. On Twitter, Apple Together bills itself as a global solidarity union made up of workers from all parts of Apple organizing for a say in their workplace. Twitter is also where they put out their call, saying, Are you experiencing union busting in your Apple store? Aggressive anti-union talk during your daily downloads? Pulled aside and intimidated about organizing? If so, fill out this anonymous survey and let us know a class action lawsuit is in the works. That Twitter post also includes a link to a Google Doc that contains a basic contact form. Kind of makes one wonder about their use of the word anonymous, but whatever. If you're looking for more information, Apple Together is actually on Twitter as at Apple Laborers. You can also visit their website, appletogether.org. While a certain amount of unrest persists in some Apple stores, a brand new one is set to open this weekend. Mac Rumors says the Cupertino company will open the doors this Saturday on a new location in the American Dream Shopping Mall in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The store is located around 10 miles outside Midtown Manhattan by car, according to Mac Rumors, so, you know, probably only a two and a half hour drive. While Apple stores tend to be the stars of various malls, eh, it's probably not going to happen this time. According to the piece, American Dream is the second largest shopping mall in the U.S. behind the Mall of America in Minnesota. Opened in 2019, the 3 million square foot shopping destination has several indoor attractions, including the Nickelodeon Universe Amusement Park, DreamWorks Water Park, a year-round indoor skiing and snowboarding resort, an NHL-sized ice skating rink, a burger restaurant owned by YouTube star Mr. Beast, and more. Like it or not, that does sound like the American Dream. Apple, American Dream, opens for the first time this Saturday, the 3rd of December at 11 a.m. Good luck finding it. If you bought or have considered an Apple Watch Ultra for all of its diving goodness... All the diving goodness has arrived. 9 to 5 Max says Oceanic Plus, the scuba diving app highlighted during the Apple Watch Ultra introduction back in September, is now available. According to the piece, Apple Watch Ultra customers can already use Apple's Depth app to record depth and measure water temperature, but Oceanic Plus takes deep dive tracking features even further. The app runs the Bloomin decompression algorithm and includes dive planning, easy-to-read dive metrics, visual and haptic alerts, no decompression limit, ascent rate, and safety stop guidance. Now how much would you pay? Well, the app is free, as is the basic plan. 
9 to 5 Mac says that includes such common dive functions as depth, time, and logging for most recent dives. Folks who want the fullness can buy a subscription that'll run $9.99 per month. Annual subscriptions will run buyers $79.99 or buy for the whole family. An annual subscription for up to five people will run $129. More news in a moment, but first a word from Rocket Money, sponsor of today's show. Are you wasting money on subscriptions? 80% of people have subscriptions they forget about. Maybe for you it's an unused Amazon Prime account. Maybe it's a streaming service you stopped watching. There is all kinds of stuff we subscribe to. If you're worried that you're paying for stuff that you're not using, there is an app to stop that. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The Rocket Money app shows you all of your subscriptions in one place. See some that you don't recognize or barely use anymore? Rocket Money can take care of those. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash M-O-K. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash M-O-K. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com. Dot com slash M O K. From the Tell Us Something We Don't Know file, recently returned Disney CEO Bob Iger says talk of Apple buying Disney is pure speculation. Well, yeah. A piece from Apple Insider says talk of Apple buying Disney has circulated for over two decades. Though it picked up steam again a few weeks ago, then picked up more steam last week. A few weeks ago, entertainment business reporter Joe Belbruno said in a series of Twitter posts that folks inside Disney really wanted Apple to buy the company, largely because of dissatisfaction with then-Disney CEO Bob Chapek. Last week, Disney surprised the planet by bouncing Chapek and bringing former Disney CEO Bob Iger back to the corner office after nearly three years out of that position. With Iger's return, more steam added. Bel Bruno wrote a piece for The Wrap that had unnamed people saying Iger would seek to have Apple buy the happiest company on Earth. That was, of course, speculation. And that is what Iger told Disney peeps this week. Speaking to cast members during a town hall meeting on Monday, says Apple Insider, Iger dismissed the suggestion entirely. According to the report, during the meeting about the future of Disney itself, Iger was asked about the rumors of a possible Apple purchase. In response, Iger characterized the claims as pure speculation, indicating that it's not something the company is considering at all. If you don't mind my two cents, I never thought that everybody speculating that Apple would buy Disney meant that Apple would buy Disney. That said, and I mean Mr. Iger no offense, his assertion that Apple buying Disney is pure speculation doesn't mean that Apple won't buy Disney. We've talked about this a bit on the Daily Observations podcast. Uh, listen there if you want to hear more. Congrats to the kids' side of Apple TV+. Plus. A piece from Apple Insider says the Cupertino streamer picked up its first BAFTA Children and Young People Awards over the weekend. Four of them, according to the report. They included El Defo winning the Content for Change Award, Wolf Walkers winning in the Feature Film category, Lovely Little Farm winning in the Preschool Live Action category, and Chris O'Dowd picking up a performance award for his work in Here We Are, Notes for Living on Planet Earth. And finally today, 
Travel and Tim traveled without much fanfare late last week. While many of us were enjoying our long holiday weekend, Apple CEO Tim Cook and the company's chief of retail and people, Deirdre O'Brien, headed to the Boston area to meet with folks injured in last week's Hingham Apple Store incident. No doubt you remember this story. An SUV drove through the glass facade of the Apple Derby Street location in Hingham, Massachusetts, not far from Boston. That left one person dead and roughly 20 people injured. Now, Mac Rumors highlights a report from Boston 25 News saying Cook and O'Brien visited the victims of the crash at the South Shore Hospital in Weymouth late last week. In a statement, the piece says, the hospital said it was grateful that Tim Cook and Deirdre O'Brien from Apple were able to come to South Shore Hospital on Friday to visit with some of the patients who were injured during last week's tragedy at the Apple Store in Hingham. Hospital President Alan Smith was quoted in the statement saying, The genuine caring and kindness shown by Tim and his team on this visit did so much to lift the spirits of patients and our colleagues. What do Elon Musk, Bob Iger, and Tim Cook all have in common? They are all three topics of conversation today on the Mac Observer's Daily Observations podcast. TMO Managing Editor Jeff Butts and I talk captains of industry on today's show, You are looking for the Daily Observations podcast from the Mac Observer online at macobserver.com or wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 50% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash macOS Ken today. This show is also sponsored by Rocket Money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and save at rocketmoney.com slash M-O-K. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.